Sharif, you've been in the front line of countering terrorism. Do you, do you think these advantages that we've heard that terrorists have, the ability to act quickly and to use these uh, new methods of communication, give them an advantage? It gives them a huge advantage. And I must agree with my panelists. Uh, it's uh, not only a cancer, it's the most deadly cancer. And I personally feel these uh, terrorists have the ability to mutate, to morph, and uh, they can do that very quickly. And obviously, uh, this platform of uh, digital age that is available, whether it is social media or any other platform which is available, they use it very, very effectively. And uh, recruitment is one thing which uh, is done on that. And I think uh, the financiers, the betters, the facilitators, uh, the sleeper cells, and the sympathizers, all of them are involved in this. And um, I totally agree with His Highness, you know, there's a requirement to, uh, for the free world to gel together and to react uh, in, a, in, a, in such a fast pace. I would like to say that we need to go on a search to get rid of this menace. And they plan their attacks very well. They want glorification. If you see the timings, if you see the choice of, uh, of uh, the targets, it, it, there's a method to this madness. It's not that somebody from the cave is just planning it. It's much more to it. And uh, they have been very, very successful in it. And I think we have been uh, late in time. But if I just say a few words about uh, my country, Pakistan and the region, we were having around 150 odd incidents uh, a month and uh, from that we came down to a single figure in 2016 and now with the help of God Almighty we have one odd incident in one or two months. So from bit to bit you know or you can say from hours to days to weeks and to months and there we are in months and I'm sure we'll have that first one year. But as you said it's a very very deadly thing and we all need to put our uh, F act together. Yeah, very, yes, yes please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely right, because uh, in Pakistan also, it was a whole of nation approach. Yes. And I think uh, that that, uh, that paid. We had some very horrendous attacks, like the school incident, yes. in which, you know, over 135 children were killed so, and martyred. So we, we, everybody came together and jailed together. So it, I think at the international level also, there is a requirement to have synergy in the fact and to have uh, a platform. And the uh, UN resolution like 1373 says it all, you know, everybody has a responsibility. And I think, uh, as you said, you know, uh, about the digital age, and I think uh, intelligence sharing is key to success against uh, terrorism. And that, that's very, very important. And if there is uh, intelligence shared and there's actionable intelligence and if people work on it, the countries react to it, I think it can bring in a marked difference. Please. Uh, when I was referring to this whole of nation approach, obviously I just gave an example and you're absolutely right. It has to be at the international level. And I'll, I'll say that uh, <clears throat> these uh, freedom uh, of speech and, uh, you know, uh, other things like uh, human rights and all, they are, uh, they are uh, limitations and uh, they are uh, difficult to handle when you are dealing with hardcore terrorists. And if you talk of human rights, I'll just give an example again of uh, about uh, 100 odd mothers whom I met after the incident. For myself, my wife, we were there. And uh, they were all demanding that they should be caught. And, uh, apprehended and hanged there in the school premises. So somebody mentioned about human rights. So they just literally got hold of me and said that, what about our human rights? So there, there, there is a balance which is required. And especially for those, uh, I would say, hardcore terrorists who have been holding heads of two of my soldiers, you know, one in each hand, and playing football with the third one. So there is, there is, there is a need to, you know, deal with these terrorists in a very firm, in a very bold, audacious, and I personally feel in a manner that uh, it creates deterrence. Obviously the norms and other rules and regulations need to be followed, but I think that's the way forward.
for those who and and then the second point obviously the counter narrative that is very very important in fact the same vehicle which they are using i personally feel we should be using it better than that and this counter narrative narrative should be should be going out uh, day in day out and all our youth and uh, you know uh, the people who get radicalized or who get impressed and all must uh, this narrative should be so potent so strong that it should nullify Could you go back to the general and um, general do you think you can deter somebody who is prepared to sacrifice their own life and their family's life one can deter why not if uh, <clears throat> there's a proper mechanism in place and uh, if there are uh, courts which can take the scenes and in our case i openly admit we have the military courts and about 170 or to do those were convicted and punished um, you know there's a number of them given death sentence now obviously uh, there, there's still a very large number which is going through the process and i, I must admit also that uh, you know uh, this was need of the hour is unusual time so for that uh, unusual uh, uh, you can say arrangement was required uh, so we did that and there is deterrence which uh, which obviously those who are in the pipeline those who are gradually getting indoctrinated and all they they do get deterred so i think uh, apart from uh, a kinetic operation there is a development prong which is required and with that this deterrence has to be in place and it does be a lot of heads uh, nodding around the the circle here right but i I'll, i'll just like you because you know about uh, my previous comments uh, we are running seven de radicalization centers and we have about 2500 individuals about who is the name of the center which is in light then the day. so that is those are in run 2500 individuals that come out of that involve the families we have ngos and police In fact, we have experienced and we have uh, delivered a number of fields. It is about three lakh thirty-eight thousand families, which is over eight hundred thousand people, were moved out of an area. Of, that area was about eight thousand square kilometers. So, eight thousand square kilometer area, people were moved out. Then we carried out the operation, and you know, I'm very happy to state that around ninety percent have gone back, you know, to those areas. So we cleared the area, moved them back, and so all this has happened with a theme built better than before. And obviously, poverty, education, health, and all these things. You know, we even gave them polio drops, and uh, Robert Gates would rang me up and thank me. So that's that's the type of you know whole. That's what I was saying. There's a whole of nation approach required, and uh, there is a full theme behind it. So only then, you know. it's not only a con it's it's not only an operation it has to be a concept which deals with with all these dimensions only then one can bring down terrorism and control extremism my question is for the general and about this tension between fighting the <laughs> taliban when um, there are sympathizers within the population who may not be in the tens but maybe in the hundreds of thousands who are supporting them how do you deal with this sort of tension how do you go after the taliban when there are large parts of the population who might be giving them shelter or maybe sympathizing with them and approving what they do i'm just wondering if you can give us some insight as to how pakistan dealt or continues to deal with this issue yes yeah please the circumstances in pakistan are uh, are, are are difficult there are huge challenges and we uh, need to understand those challenges for example we have uh, over 3 million of one refugees in pakistan for last over 30 years we have uh, a 2400 km border between pakistan and afghanistan which is a porous border we have intertribal linkages there are number of uh, villages which are you can say divided villages in a sense that you can you know have uh, dinner in one house and then have lunch in the other and you will be on the other side of the border and then you have uh, as you said lot of people who are who are inter intermarriages and so this the milieu or the uh, environment is pretty difficult but pakistan is managing that once we launched this operation zarbehas we decided that we will uh, establish rate of our country 
rid of Pakistan, rid of the government in all the areas. So now the rid of the government exists in the whole of Pakistan and the border is being managed. Uh, there are difficulties on the other side. There are, um, you know, pockets in Afghanistan where a lot of uh, uh, all these organizations, a lot of terrorists and the groups are there. And then there's a talk of various tribes and various networks like Akhanis and all. So that all is dependent on the situation in Afghanistan. So we hope and pray. It is our, um, you know, brotherly country. And we hope and pray that uh, stability returns to Afghanistan. And ours and the Pan destiny obviously is linked. And I personally feel the moment there is stability in Afghanistan, things will come yes. about uh, various conflicts that are going on in, in, in the world. I personally feel there is a requirement to resolve these conflicts. But that would also, you know, like Kashmir is one, Palestine is one, another conflict. And uh, once we do that, I'm sure, again, it would help in having a better understanding better harmony in various regions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Because glorification, in my opinion, is something on which these terrorist organizations thrive. And they, that's why they choose the right moment, the right you know, target and all. And uh, so in that way, maybe in the future, the West, you know, the, or the developed countries, they will have problem in a sense as far as the cyber is concerned. If it has to be something, it has to be spectacular in nature. And uh, I hope it doesn't happen. And it would be very unfortunate. But that's, that's what uh, they have always been trying. Uh, so that, that, that would be something if one can see in this. Uh, but there is a requirement to have filters. There is a requirement to control the technology in a manner that it does not get into the hands. It's easier said than done. But there has to be something done about it. And I personally feel the international community needs to sit together, develop a counter-narrative, and develop, as far as this digital age is concerned, develop some system that we have a check on it.